Melbourne is back. The footy is back. Yeah, AFL walkers. round one, season 2021. Tigers it's the bloke who blues. walks. Let's and welcome go. to this uh, commentary for the video walking around the Richmond Carlton game at MCG round one for season 2021 and uh, I'm going to commentate in real time um, I'm, I'm, um, I also thought that I might um, for this this walking around the concourse the immediate outside of the area of the MCG I, I was tossing up I, I, I've changed my mind in the last five minutes I was going to slow down the commentary uh, slow down the vision um, to to, to um, give myself time to react to and commentate on um, what what was going through my mind as I was filming um, the, the, the people's body language, um, why I turned in a certain direction at a time, um, explaining why there was uh, in about three to four minutes the um, the camera's just going to stare at concrete walls and walking past. But I've decided not to do that um, in the last five minutes because um, because I I, um, I don't ever go out filming looking to catch people by surprise or catch them unawares or you know none of these people got up in the morning and said you know what I'm going to be on a YouTube video today when I got when I go to watch the watch the footy at the MCG I'm I'm going to make sure that I uh, end up on YouTube. Um, so, it's it's I, 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 I respect people's privacy, and um, you know, fair enough. We're in a public place. Um, it's very crowded. Um, people are very distracted. I'm not looking to take advantage of that at all. I'm looking to capture um, uh, um, life as it's unfolding in front of me. I'm not looking to catch people by surprise. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit more as we go through this video is about an hour long but um, I'm, I'm super happy with how this video came out um, uh, at the time uh, well up until this time like I've now now produced 150 videos for this channel of various lengths and um, this video is uh, uh, this is the this filming, I've, I've never been amongst so many people, and, and I was, I was uh, incredibly nervous, um, to be honest, because uh, well, there's some cops in front of us, <laughs> and the camera pans to the right. <laughs> um, uh, now that that bloke was sitting there, you'll you'll see that I did I did leave the camera watch over him. And I didn't disturb him, but I also didn't make make a, um, a concerted effort to, to you know to, to film him unnecessarily. But um, so you're going to have to excuse me as this commentary unfolds because you'll probably find that uh, um, my my uh, train of thought is going to get interrupted by the vision, um, uh, by what I'm seeing in front of me, and and the things that I want to say in a split second. Um, which I can't. Uh, I, I, I would love to slow down this footage, but you know, I, d I don't think it'd be fair because um, you know it'd, it'd mean that people are on screen for longer. I'm drawing more attention to them by, by talking about them, and, and most of the time, here we go. So the reason I pointed the camera at the wall is because of these kids. I was I was terrified that I was going to get. Um, tapped on the shoulder by a policeman or even worse a parent and say hey what are you doing filming my kids you haven't got any right to film my kids from behind or to the side or so uh, which is which is true and I, I don't want to film kids and I'm very careful not to film kids at all um, and uh, in this in this case it's impossible to avoid them but it is possible to uh, create the context of, of while you're doing it, be aware of being aware of who's around me, uh, listening for voices when they're behind me, just keeping a, um, a, a, an eye out towards uh, what's coming towards me, what's around me, um, and, and adjusting you know the direction of the camera. Um, uh, and and, and uh, we'll see that there are kids in this video, but then they can't be identified by their face um, or their features uh, or their 
if they can be identified by their face, you'll see, and I'll point them out when they come up, I've edited out um, uh, the footage where kids do appear full on um, in front of the camera, that their faces are clearly identified, that um, it's easy to make out you know, their picture. I don't want anyone using my videos to pause and create a screenshot of a little boy or a little girl um, that's not my intention. But at the same time, like this is real life, um, this is the whole reason I went down there is to capture the excitement of uh, the footy being um, restated. This is the first game of Aussie Rules football for not only 2021, but it's actually the first game at the MCG since 2019, would you believe? Uh, I think, uh, possibly, but we only had one round Australian Rules football last year in Melbourne and then that was it. Uh, every single other game was played interstate. Now this video uh, also uh, what I decided to do it's not in a strictly linear order of you know from the from the first minute that I pressed um, play or point and shoot to the moment that I finished. Um, I figured uh, this is the last ever video that I'm going to film with this Olymp Olympus digital camera. Uh, it's not built for this sort of filming, but I've used it uh, a lot over the last five to six years. And I'm, I'm trying to be very respectful of this girl in front of me. Um, uh, I, I deliberately tried not to train the camera on her as a person, um, except that she was in front of me and there was a woman stepping in and I made sure that I didn't film her. Um, and, and uh, you know, there's two reasons why I stepped off to the left and stood there on the platform. One was to let that girl um, put plenty of space between me and that other passenger and not follow her down the platform, but also just to capture this fantastic afternoon, evening, um, uh, sun and, and uh, ambience. Just, it was such a fantastic, uh, typically Melbourne, uh, autumn day, uh, it was balmy, um, it was um, uh, just a fantastic, uh, I'm so glad I, I went and made the effort um, to film this because you know, this is this is what Melbourne is, um, this, this is the, one of the best things about living in Melbourne, you know, the events, the sport, um, uh, the lifestyle of going to the footy or going to the cricket or or going to the tennis, that's the, uh, the uh, where the Australian Open is held there over on the left at uh, Rod Laver Arena, it's just a short walk over the train tracks on the, on the bridge there. Um, so, uh, I, I, you know, I apologise that my, my train of thought is not going to be very, um, uh, very easy to follow. I'm going to be jumping around a lot. Um, I probably have you know, failed to get to that point in time now. But, um, I really wanted to mix up the editing for this video because I think if I just um, run this video in the order of what it was shot, it's going to be a little bit boring. And one of the things I've had to teach myself uh, with uh, creating videos for, uh, for this purpose is that you've got to start with your best content first. Um, put your best stuff up front. Um, I, I, it doesn't really, that's not really my nature as a storyteller. Um, I'm, I'm used to letting stories unfold, I'm used to being ambiguous in my, my storytelling, my writing and, and script writing, um, you know, with a beginning, middle and end, but you know, with, with video content, what I'm trying to teach myself is put the best stuff up front and then let the viewer decide um, if they want to let the video run or if they want to skip forward. So I figured... Um, I uh, just came up with the idea of, uh, well, there's there's, there's, yeah, there's there's the walking around the MCG. Well, why, don't we, why don't we start with that, that the viewer can you know, see that this video is about walking around the Melbourne Cricket Ground immediately before the start of you know, play. Uh, this is about um, quarter to six or quarter past six. I can't remember which. The game started at 7.25 in the evening. So I wanted to give myself plenty of time just to casually walk around the ground, capture the sights and sounds, that, that, that excitement, that anticipation of seeing, seeing your team in the flesh for the first time in maybe 
maybe two years um, for some of us, um, and and just capturing that that Melbourne moment, um, you know, just the the, the the evening sunlight, the ambience, the warm weather. You can see there's so many people dressed in shorts and shirt sleeves, and uh, and to try and immerse the viewer in 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 the content that. You know, this is this is what it's like to go to the footy in Melbourne. Um, uh, you know, there's something very very special about it. You see that guy in shorts. Now, I, um, I did a quick edit there um, to try and disguise the uh, the jolting. Now you can see some kids up on the left, so I'm not too concerned at the moment because they're well ahead of me. Um, they're off to the left, and the, the sun is streaming into our face, so I wasn't too worried about that. I was uh, pretty happy to see uh, this. Uh, this opening here in the grandstand, uh, um, cut through that. Uh, I was patting myself on the back at the time, thinking, oh, this will look good. Um, and we've got another gate uh, up here. Uh, Melbourne is directly in front of us, the CBD. Uh, that's the south bank of the Yarra, where those two towers are. Um, up ahead is uh, the main part of the CBD. And then, um, uh, they're just walking slowly along past these gates. Uh, now, uh, normally this area would be shoulder to shoulder with supporters, but uh, we're still under, on, as this was being filmed, uh, Melbourne was still under um, some restrictions where this ground, uh, for those that don't know, holds um, 100,000 people at a pinch. But uh, under, COVID, um, um, under COVID regulations, for this particular sporting fixture, it was uh, restricted to 50% capacity. So, um, although it looks like, um, I don't know, it depends on where you're coming from. Like for a Melbourne person, it's looking to be quiet for a, for a blockbuster game of Richmond and Carlton. Uh, Richmond being the premiers of the previous uh, season. Um, with their third uh, uh, premiership um, in four years. Carlton, a um, sleeping giant. They've been pretty pretty poor the last 20 years, um, but they're gradually building, uh, so they keep telling us. Oh, uh, so I, I, I was checking the um, the battery and the, the time left on the camera, so I, I did an edit there, which is why the camera sort of made to go towards the, the hoarding there. Now, um, uh, I'll interrupt myself again, apologies. So, um, at this point, I, I was uh, um, I was uh, very anxious because I was terrified to learn that this was a, a um, an entrance for the kids. These these might be the the uh, the Oz kickers, um, and the, the, you can see two quick transitions. Uh, or is it one? There was a kid stepped out in in front of the camera there, um, and I just had to edit that bit out because uh, he got in, uh, the, the camera got a full full. Uh, Look at him there, so I edited him out. That entrance was obviously for the Oz Kickers, the kids under 10 uh, that do the half time games um, on, on the ground, um, uh, which is a lot of fun for them. Um, but I wasn't I wasn't going to stop filming, I wasn't going to deliberately you know, swing the camera violently away from those kids. What I, what I did was, um, all I did was just, uh, and you'll notice it, you've probably already noticed it um, in this particular uh, part of the walk, is that I just, um, I just quietly and casually and unobtrusively tried to walk behind as many adults as I could find, <laughs> basically, um, to, to, to uh, obscure the fact that I had a camera. Now, I was walking around in a, in a yellow high-vis vest and uh, my new hat. Actually, um, and uh, so because I never, I never try to disguise the fact I'm filming. I actually try to do the opposite. I try to, I try to look as professional as I can. Um, so if people do, do see me, the first thing they see is a high vis jacket, and it's perfect for this environment because um, I'm, I'm, I'm not out of place as far as uh, security or, 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 or people. Um, managing the crowds um, on this particular occasion. Now, as we're getting around here, I was actually scratching a bit, trying to work out <laughs> where, where, where am I going to go? And I um, decided to walk down this particular uh, area, which is, those are the, the, the test wickets uh, for the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Where they, they used to have them on, on the ground itself, but they built this facility outside for the uh, domestic and international cricketers to practice on. 
And, uh, and it proved to be perfect that um, uh, that's one thing I'm really enjoying about creating these videos is that um, you know, there's no need to really plan or contrive um, what you're doing too much. Just let it, let it um, happen and, uh, and things will work out. So I decided um, to take a fairly slow one, um, 270 degree swivel um, there to give, to give a sense of well, where, where's the MCG sit in relation to the city if you're from overseas. Um, the sun's setting there in the west. Um, this is possibly about 6.30, quarter to 7, so we're in the final hour before the game, and you can see everyone's pretty casual. Um, there's, there's people, there's a lot of people not wearing masks. I choose to wear a mask, and you'll see some people are wearing masks, and I think that's just, um, that's just very natural. Like, we're very lucky in, in Australia that uh, our, our, our island nation's status has afforded us the, the, um, the ability to uh, keep out the virus to a large extent, unlike uh, those of you living in uh, Europe and Brazil, South America, um, uh, the US. Um, you know, it's just so sad seeing Europe um, go through, you know, I think Germany's in their um, month six of uh, the current lockdown. Um, just, 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 um, just so sad, but uh, um, personally, I don't take any of this for granted. Um, uh, so here we are, um, and I apologise again. My, I'm interrupting my own thoughts. But um, what I decided to do was I just wanted to give a sense of um, what it's like to travel to the footy, what it's like to travel from you know one particular area. So I decided to um, I decided to start at Jollymont Station. And we'll see that footage later on. And Jollymont is one station out from uh, the city. And the next station is this station, West Richmond Station. So we're two train stops outside of the city. And I thought, well, this, um, this, could, this, this will be a really nice spot to introduce uh, you, the viewer. Um, I make these videos assuming that uh, you, you are a person watching from overseas, that you don't know anything about Australia, you know very little about um, uh, life in Melbourne, and you know next to nothing, um, or probably definitely nothing about Australian rules football. So I just wanted to use the video, um, especially this particular occasion, just to create that experience of what it's like uh, to walk uh, to the MCG using the public transport um, uh, and, and uh, just you know trying to capture that sense of it's a really fantastic sunny late afternoon early evening um, there's crowds of people going to the football um, not as many as there usually would be because as I mentioned before there's only 50,000 allowed to the game in only 50,000 allowed into a stadium that normally seats 100,000 and um, normally this game, the first round of the season um, between these two teams, which have a great rivalry historically, um, they, they would have a full house on, a, on a, an occasion such as this, except we're in the middle of COVID. Um, I don't normally film inside trains, but um, uh, I was hoping there'd be a lot of footy supporters. Um, there wasn't, there was pretty much uh, no one. And I was keen to capture um, the excitement of the crowd uh, travelling on the train, uh, coming off the train. Um, but yeah, there just there just wasn't the volume of people, unfortunately, at this particular moment when I was uh, was filming. But um, it's a very short ride from West Richmond Station. Uh, the next station coming up is uh, Dollymont Station, and you can see. Hopefully, you can start to see a bit of uh, method in the editing, where I've. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm chopping and I'm chopping around and uh, uh, reorganizing the order of the footage that I've filmed instead of it being a linear start to finish um, presentation of the footage I've decided to uh, start with the walking around the ground and then at each edit go back to the part where you know we're traveling to the footage so Although you may feel that this looks familiar and you've seen it before, you actually haven't. Um, uh, you haven't seen, up until now, you haven't seen 
this footage uh, walking along the platform, uh, uh, leaving uh, the train station. Normally this would be just so full of people getting off the train and coming out and flowing into the ground. But as I said, COVID, um, things are, are pretty different. But thank goodness that uh, one thing that didn't change um, was people driving to the ground and cars being parked around the ground, uh, which I was also really keen to capture because that's just another, um, it's, it's just a part of life in Melbourne, a part of the sporting experience. Um, and here we are back, back at the, um, uh, outside the cricket nets. And um, you know, just, um, I like, I like using the movement of um, people and cars and bikes in front of me. Just to, it just um, makes the the, the, the the movement of the camera when you move from left to right like that in a big way. It just makes it so much easier for the viewer. I think. Um, now there's kids in front of us there. Uh, you can see that I um, uh, edited those out um, once they started becoming fairly distinguishable on the screen. There's a couple of guys selfishly uh, riding through the crowd, in my opinion. Um, although I suppose it's not too many people, but yeah. Um, so I just, I just made sure, I, I like to take my time because, you know, walking videos are all about, um, you know, stopping to smell the roses, aren't they? And uh, just taking in what's going on around us. So I, I just like to take the time to stop and film and just, just be a fly on the wall, um, sort of provide the view with that, you know, um, um, bird's eye view of what's going on around. Um, now, uh, <laughs> as I'm walking up here, um, you'll see this bloke with his back to me. It took me a while to recognise that that was, um, he was security. <laughs> Uh, there's plenty of people employed uh, to direct people around, um, especially on this occasion. Um, you will hear later on in about five minutes over the PA um, people being directed to the COVID rules. Now, I was um, patting myself on the back here. I was thinking, yeah, if I just walk close, close uh, on the inside of the crowd, I'll get a good picture of, uh, of, of the crowd coming towards me. Um, and uh, as we were coming up to these beer gardens, <laughs> the camera will turn in a moment, and I was thinking, oh, this would be great. And then to my horror, I realised that people were seeing there's a woman's leg, and straight away, <laughs> I was expecting a tap on the shoulder from security or the police saying, mate, you're filming up, up, uh, up the skirt to women which is um, an offence, of course, in, uh, well, it is here anyway, um, I go around uh, filming up, up, up women's skirts, I think it's called upskirting, so I, uh, <laughs> when, when, when I realised that, <laughs> that the, I just didn't think of it, to be honest, I just did not think um, of, 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 so of the camera uh, seeing people's legs <laughs> exposed behind the glass. Anyway, so um, uh, that was another on-the-spot decision to just stop and turn and look at the sun. I'm just trying to give a very, very uh, um, you know, quick, broad view of you know, what's happening. But I was very conscious of the sun setting by this stage um, because uh, we're now coming into you know, a part of the air around the ground. That kid, now the reason I didn't get that kid out is because quickly went in and out of frame. Uh, so I was very conscious by this stage of the sun is setting, I'm losing the best of the sun and there'll be um, a fair, uh, be less light around this uh, eastern side of the ground. So that's why I didn't stay too long lingering looking at that western view. Now um, here is where I really wanted to slow down the footage but I've decided not to because there's so much going on and uh, even though I've watched this now, maybe this is my third time, plus the filming. When I was filming, I really was so focused now. Here comes the hip and shoulder from the cult supporter. Bang! <laughs> oh dear. So, um, uh, I am surprised that didn't happen more often. Anyway, so, um, uh, 
Well, and I apologize, I'm losing my train of thought as we go, and there's so much going on. But when I was filming, I was concentrating so much because I was so nervous. Because this literally is the first time that I've, I've been amongst so many people, um, not just filming, but also in COVID. Because uh, just to, just to um, pause for a second, I, uh, not the video, but just pause my commentary on the footy is that. Um, I've, create, I've, I've made around 36 videos about the Australian Open um, to January in the lead up. And in the end, I didn't go uh, during the tournament because I, I, um, I was quite, quite cautious that I didn't want to be around crowds. Um, we had an outbreak of, um, of hot spots in Melbourne. Um, the first week of the Australian Open, Melbourne went into a strict five day lockdown. And then you had people like Djokovic um, and, and a couple of other players having a great old whinge about how strict things were and they couldn't cope and it wasn't fair and it, you know, it wasn't recognised, right, recognising them as elite sportsmen and like, come on, give us a break, Jesus Christ. Um, so I'll stop there. <laughs> um, so I wasn't too sure. I'd gone through that crowd. Um, I nearly walked... Uh, into the view of a, uh, a mainstream, um, um, one of the main channels here had its outdoor um, outdoor cross to one of their journalists, their sports journalists. I nearly walked behind the journalist in full view of the um, the camera, um, and and then I thought, no, hang on a second, I don't want to be filmed by Channel Seven um, with the camera um, down at my hip. <laughs> that I'll, I'll, so I quickly avoided that. So you won't see them on this footy. But they, they are back there almost straight ahead. And then it was just a case of just um, taking my time, taking a breath, um, just taking it in. I, I just wanted to show the viewer, you know, this this is what it's like to live in Melbourne. Go to the footy on a, on a well, this is a Thursday night, of course. And I wanted to capture those. Um, it's a very common sight. Um, People, uh, usually kids and teenagers and young blokes, kicking the footy to each other outside the ground. That used to happen far, far more when I was a kid and in the 90s. Um, they've kind of stamped it out. Um, people don't really bring their football to the to the to the AFL matches anymore. Uh, there used to be the crowd used to be allowed onto the ground after the main game was finished. Uh, they don't really let that happen these days. And there's the bloke in the golf cart. And um, that's something else that never used to happen when I was a kid. Or, or it's really just recent, isn't it? That um, you know the, the, the fans, you know, um, who suffer from mobility issues are now taken care of in ways that uh, that just didn't happen. Um, in, in previous years and decades. Um, now over on the wall, you can just see behind that um, pylon is uh, the memorial to the uh, 1956 Olympics that were held at the stadium. Uh, which, uh, it's, 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 uh, there is an Olympic museum that you, you can come to as a visitor. And also, um, I'll just quickly point out, as the, the vision changes uh, to this, uh, pathetic zoom footage of people coming off the train that uh, you, we, we also have already walked past the uh, the main entrance to the Melbourne Cricket Ground members section uh, which was why you would have noticed uh, so many people well dressed men and women standing around uh, seemingly doing nothing not even some of them looking at their mobile phones which is kind of nice to see now um so this is, uh, you should uh, be getting the idea now that this was footage taken earlier in the evening, that uh, I've come off that uh, very same train, that I've come out those very exit gates myself. And uh, I'm training the camera at half zoom uh, towards the exit because I wanted to capture the hordes of fans, uh, the Richmond Tigers and, and Carlton. Blues fans streaming off the train, flowing, um, flowing uh, impatiently out the gates, and walking past me. Well, do you know what? <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> I was really surprised, actually, that um, there, 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 there just was hardly any supporters uh, coming off the train. Um, oh, it was a bit frustrating that uh, 
<laughs> when people did walk past the spot that I was filming from, they didn't do it while I was there actually filming. They did it while I was walking to that spot and while I was walking away from it, uh, which was a bit rude. But um, I was pretty happy to capture this. Um, uh, I just want to pause here. Okay, we're back. Um, after that uh, phone call interruption. Uh, so, um, yeah, I was just really keen to capture the sights and the sounds of what it's, you know, what, what, what it looks and feels like. Um, I wish this video you could smell the freshness of the air and, and um, you know, it was very balmy that night. It was very pleasant. Um, and, uh, and just life in general goes on around the footy, of course. Uh, the, the, the Melbourne Cricket Ground is very close to the city within walking distance. It's an easy walk from the city to the ground. Um, and here I am uh, trying to catch uh, those, <laughs> trying to catch those footy supporters just straining inwardly, wishing that they would walk towards the camera and flow past me, but uh, it just didn't happen. And by this stage, and you've got to remember this is earlier, earlier before I walked around the ground, I was conscious of uh, time getting away and the sun setting. Uh, I didn't want to be filming in the dark, um, which wouldn't have happened because uh, uh, we're still in uh, daylight saving here and uh, the sun's not going down until about uh, 8.30. But anyway, um, I wanted to capture the best possible views in the best possible light. Um, so around here, um, uh, we're on heading back towards the eastern side of the ground. We're about three quarters of the way around the ground, maybe a little bit more. Um, I wanted to complete the circle. Um, my plan was to start filming at Jollymont Station uh, and head in a southern direction uh, to, to walk down the hill around the ground and then uh, exit uh, in an easterly direction from the ground past the Punt Road Oval and towards Richmond's train station. That was my plan, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, up to this point, I was starting to relax. I, I, I was very conscious of how tense I was, and there's a kid, you now I haven't edited him out because you can't quite make him out perfectly um, unless you freeze frame it, but then he's side on, so I decided to leave that in. Uh, there's another kid there in front of us, she's turned around perfectly at the right time, and by this stage I was conscious of the fact that I was a single white male walking around in a public place with a camera at my hip. It uh, puts me at a, uh, a dubious, <laughs> a dubious kind of state when it comes to you know women walking past. Um, I, I just kept feeling that I was. I had this constant feeling by this stage that I was going to get a tap on the shoulder and a please explain question from. Uh, and and I and I did I did deliberately avoid police. Uh, they were stationed <laughs> all around the ground in groups of. Uh, minimum of two, um, and uh, whenever I noticed them, I sort of tried to make an, a discreet, uh, discreet turn away from them. But I was adamant. I'm always adamant when I'm making these videos that I, I keep the camera rolling no matter what, because uh, you can fix things up in the edit, as any film professional will tell you. Um, I was happy to leave those little girls in because their back is to the camera. Um, uh, they, 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 you know, they, they, they're in no, um, they, they, now the reason there was an edit there, uh, is because, uh, I was, tr I'm trying to make the, the camera, I don't use, um, the camera doesn't have any kind of stabilization feature in it, um, the editing software has a stabilization feature, but I don't use it because it takes too long to, too long to render the footage. Now here we are back earlier, of course, um, and I, I really, as I was uh, getting into the edit, and by the time I got to this stage, I, I could see that it was working. There's a really nice um, storytelling aspect, I think, to laying out the footage this way, that I, I as I said before, it's, the, the key thing for these videos, uh, walking content videos, is yes, uh, it's an uninterrupted walk, but at the same time, 
like I'm trying to learn that you've got to put your best stuff up the front. You've got to front load your videos with the best footage uh, to 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 keep the viewer engaged, and that's something that's going to take me a long time to really intrinsically learn um, and make it really ingrained. But uh, at the same time, like I, I I sense that I do have a natural. Uh, a really good natural feel for you know what makes a good frame uh, what makes a good walk um, look, I, 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 I approach the video uh, content the same as anything I create uh, whether it's uh, uh, writing a short story writing a short film script a, 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 a script for theatre or film look to be honest uh, I will be honest is that I am I am the audience of everything I create <laughs> And I like it, and uh, and I have a, a great deal of pride about what I create, um, and I care about what I create. But so long as I'm happy with it, hopefully somebody else will be. And in you know the the, the audience of the internet is so big, you know eventually this 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 video content will find its audience. Now what I've decided in the last couple of weeks is, uh, and this is off the back of the stats. I've had a, a pretty sudden uh, drop in stats uh, in the last three weeks, except for the last 10 days, and I might talk about that later. Is that it, it's, it's, I, I can't ignore the fact any longer that you know, possibly the, 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 the viewers uh, are voting with their uh, <laughs> the click of the mouse, that this footage just isn't cutting the mustard. Um, as far as they're concerned, but there's, there's people that definitely are watching um, huge chunks of footage, especially the last 10 days. I've had my, my two recent commentaries. I've, I had a, I had the, the three-hour commentary for the, um, the big walk that I did through the city, through the three different university campuses out to Carlton. Three hours of footage. Well, somebody has watched all of that video in the first three days it was published so all of a sudden i'm finding that um the stats are going through the roof for the views and the watch time um so i i know that people want to watch this stuff and maybe you know youtube viewers are a bit unforgiving uh which i find a little bit hard to uh rationalize because if, 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 if uh, my understanding is correct, that 70% of YouTube content is watched on uh, iPads and iPhones, mobile devices, well, what difference does it make whether it's a 4K or, you know, this type of, you know, footage? But evidently, uh, it would seem that it does matter. So this is actually the very last video I will make with this Olympus digital camera, which is a bit of a shame because... Um, uh, it, it fits in my back pocket, it's easy to carry, it's easy to recharge, it's easy to handle, it's, it's light. Uh, I'm going to upgrade to a Sony uh, ZV-1 vlogging camera, uh, which is a little bit bigger, um, and obviously it's an extra expense in these COVID times that I don't want to incur. But I think the time has come to acknowledge the stats and say, well, after 150 videos, I've only got 14 subscribers and 1,500 views and, and, and about 35 hours of watch time. It's taken me five months to get 35 hours of watch time. I'm clearly, you know, this, this channel isn't getting the traction that I want, so it's, it, is, it is time to, uh, to say, well, do I want to keep making these videos? Well, uh, yes, I do. Uh, while I can, at the, the, the volume that I can, and I can turn them around quickly, uh, from, from the time that I conceive a video idea to the time where it becomes a published video, I do turn them around very, very quickly. Um, and I, that's what I like about this walking video uh, niche is that uh, all you have to do is walk around with a camera, stitch the, kit, stitch the, the footage together in a quick edit, uh, not as quick as I would like. Um, you, know, you do need to take your time and, and, and put the titles in and, and things, but um, generally it takes me, um, I'd say it takes me about four days to create a video. From the moment I think of what I want to do, to the moment that I decide I'm going out filming and uh, only do a couple of hours of filming at a time, and then by the time you um, uh, edit it all and then publish it, 
um, it's, it's generally four full full days, eight hour days of um, I'd say would be uh, the top. So here we are at the uh, the top of Yarra Park on the eastern side of uh, Yarra Park and the MCG. Um, I I was I, I, I deliberately walked um, this point. You would never get off the train and walk to this point and then walk back down the hill, of course. Um, no sensible person would do that, but I was extremely keen. Uh, now you can see uh, the footage um, is changing slightly here. You can sense that it's a bit more stable. I've decided uh, to, to use this last video footage as uh, experimenting uh, with the stabilization feature uh, within the Filmora um, editing software. Um, you'll see around the edges that it will reflect, it will uh, look a bit odd. Um, and here we are, just as I say, <laughs> just as I say that, we're back at the feet of Ron Barassi, the Ron Barassi statue, one of the many statues to our uh, sporting heroes that are placed around the MCG. Um, so this is the last, the last uh, segment of walking through a fairly thick crowd. Um, it's this uh, segment coming to an end where the crowd's going to thin out in the next uh, 10 minutes of this footage. Now, I, I definitely uh, 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 spent a bit of time thinking, do I edit that little kid out? Um, he was obscured by his mum's skirt, uh, which was why I left him in. Um, so again, uh, you can see that we're on the, the shadow uh, side of the MCG. The sun is setting, the light's giving out. I've timed it perfectly, all by accident. Now these people that are coming from the left, they've actually walked up from Richmond Station, which is where we're going to finish this video in about uh, 20 to 30 minutes time. I thought, I thought about walking against the flow of the crowd, like walking against the traffic, and I thought, well, you're not going to see much. Like you're going to, be, I want to get a sense of you know how much of a crowd there is there. I wanted to get the sense of uh, the excitement, but I felt like. I really actually felt like, um, I just felt there was a bit of a subdued atmosphere about the whole thing because there's a, there's a lady with a mask around her chin because I felt like, like myself, uh, I was very nervous about this. This is the most amount of people that I have been around and in amongst a huge crowd, a continuous stream of people since. Uh, the 19th of March 2020 and to be honest it felt very very strange I mean it felt great don't get me wrong it was fantastic to see the crowds it's fantastic to see people going to the footy but from a COVID point of view and a personal safety point of view and after having um, uh, after having uh, deliberately skipped the Australian Open uh, because I was I was very very nervous um, that the the first week of the Australian Open was actually uh, the, the, it was nearly it was in danger of being cancelled the whole tournament because uh, there was there was two days of play and all of a sudden Australia, uh, Melbourne developed um, a hot spot a, ra a, a, a rampaging hot spot and the whole city went into lockdown stage four lockdown again uh, for the first week of the Australian Open. So it was pretty nerve-wracking. So I, I think for that reason, I, 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 just, I just felt a sense that a lot of people, like myself, we were pretty nervous about going into a situation where we're gonna be sitting amongst um, people again in a crowded situation. You could see the scenes around the ground. Uh, you've seen it for yourself in this video that very little social distancing going on. A lot of people choosing not to wear masks. Uh, I personally, I do wear a mask, and I will still wear a mask throughout the rest of this year, I think. And I do carry gloves with me at all times because um, I, I just, I just feel that um, prevention is the best cure. And um, on a personal note, my parents are in aged care. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, I haven't seen my mum, and it's probably going to therapy, I don't know what we're talking about, but I haven't seen my mum since uh, uh, July or August last year. I haven't seen my dad uh, even longer, um, and, and, and I haven't been to visit them 
I just want to make sure that when I do go to visit them in my own mind and my own conscience, conscience um, I've, I've been you know, playing it as safe as possible. Um, so that's the main reason I'm still wearing a mask and, and gloves. And I'm on public transport all the time um, as well. So I think um, by this point I was really relaxed. I was really happy that I'd, I'd run the gauntlet with the crowd got around the MCG and without any hold up there wasn't any no one tapped me on the shoulders to say what the hell are you doing um, and no one called the police the police didn't have a problem um, there's a lot of security cameras around this uh, park and this ground as you can imagine um, so I know that I would have stuck out with my high-vis vest on camera um, in the control room and uh, it didn't cause any problems. So at this stage, I was really happy with how things went. There's a bloke kicking his footy, which was great to see. Um, I also was happy that uh, the sun, as it was setting, had not yet disappeared to the point where it was gonna affect, uh, affect uh, the quality of the footage. Um, and uh, from this point, there's probably about uh, half an hour. Uh, before the game and people are still arriving of course uh, they're walking down from Richmond train station which is directly behind the camera at this point to the east in front of us to the west is uh, the, the Rod Labor Arena um, Margaret Court Arena uh, the new John Kane Arena recently named used to be high sense um, so I was really comfortable at this point it was just a case of just let things uh, the cards fall where they, where they may um, I knew, uh, I was a bit surprised there wasn't more people coming down the path, but I deliberately headed and I deliberately made this my exit from the Melbourne Cricket Ground because uh, this is Brunton Avenue in front of us next to the train lines. Um, that, uh, that road is always shut off whenever there is a sporting event um, on an MCG. And I wanted to walk down the middle of the road and capture people coming up. Um, the, the crowd was pretty thin at this stage, uh, which was a bit surprising, but um, I had to remind myself that uh, the ground was only at half capacity at this point. Only 50,000 were allowed to come. Uh, this was a very big deal, this game, for all the Richmond supporters, the yellow and black uh, Tiger Army. That they were going to have uh, last year's premiership flag presented to the crowd and the members but not just last year's flag also the premiership that they won in uh, uh, the 2019 season they didn't get a chance to unfurl that flag in front of their supporters because um COVID sent uh, all the afl games interstate so they uh they had two flags to present this time. So here we are uh, uh, chopping back, well not chopping, uh, transitioning back to earlier in the evening, uh, walking to the ground. And this is, uh, of this video, this is probably my favourite footage because the sun is just, uh, in, <laughs> it's just choice, isn't it? Just a, a choice moment in time being captured. Um, I deliberately waited. I wanted people in front of the camera but I didn't want to be walking too closely behind them. And you'll notice in the next uh, two, two to three minutes, the camera will uh, sort of wander off to the right and then it will suddenly do a semicircle and then a full circle because um, there were voices behind me. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to, here we go. So I'm, I'm taking the opportunity, look at those houses. <laughs> look at those houses. They are trophy houses as far as I'm concerned. If I could ever afford to live in that street on the edge of the MCG, look out. Um, and I will be doing a walk around that area actually. There's actually a, uh, a, a map provided by the City of Melbourne through the historical houses of East Melbourne. Uh, I'll be doing that with the new camera, the Sony vlogging camera. Um, and hopefully I'll get that in my hands in the next two or three weeks. Um, so by this stage, uh, I was happy that there was no kids. I, I made sure I did not want to film kids, as I've explained before. 
I didn't want to be walking behind parents with kids. And uh, as it turned out, you'll see on the left, uh, coming up into view very soon, is uh, two to three gentlemen, smartly dressed, I might say. So they might be MCG members. There we go. In their smart casual gear, one <laughs> well dressed, one in shorts. Isn't that just so Australian? And possibly <laughs> any sporting fan around the world, whether you're in Germany going to the Champions League or the EPL in England or going. <laughs> you know, in America, you have tailgate parties, don't you? Um, outside the, uh, the NFL games. We. Uh, there was some people having a picnic earlier on, but it's not really, people just, in, in Melbourne, we just want to get to the game, uh, really, it's not really our thing, and and on that I'll just say that I, although I haven't, you know, growing up it was common, you know, to be put in the car and drive, drive to an AFL game, or VFL it was, as it was when I was a kid, but, um, the, 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 the negative uh, aspect of driving to the game, of course, is being stuck in the, in the car park trying to get home from the game. So it's much, much easier, much more convenient, much quicker uh, to get away from the game at the end, especially if you've been absolutely had your pants pulled down by the opposition and been thrashed. And I've been to those games in the 90s. Uh, it's much better to get on the train and go home quickly on a crowded train than it is, in my opinion, to wait in a crowded car park <laughs> where your car can't move in the middle of winter. Oh dear. Anyway, so um, uh, I was really keen, again, this is a good example, that I was just keen to just uh, set the camera up. I'm, I'm holding the camera. It's not, not in a gimbal. It's not in, I'm not holding anything except for the camera, I just really wanted to capture this fantastic light, this fantastic ambience, um, this magnificent stadium which is famous all around the world um, and also uh, played host to many different types of um, um, entertainment events. Paul McCartney came here um, in the 1990s for example uh, and, and, uh, and played to a huge crowd um, I'm trying to think of other um, uh, live music events. Um, nothing's coming to mind at the moment. But, but um, yeah, I was a bit surprised that there wasn't more people. But again, I, I just had to start reminding myself that you know um, the game uh, had a limited crowd capacity. But I was really keen to capture people walking past the camera in their their team's colours. Um, it's just such a great night to be out. Um, we're so grateful um, to, to, to gra the gratitude for the circumstances we find ourselves in. A year almost to the day this was filmed, a year to the day where life really flipped on its head. And I'm so sorry and feel so deeply for, for anyone in any country which is still gripped by this, uh, this you know, this terrible, terrible disease that's wrecked havoc all around the world and thrown our lives in chaos, um, which will be a talking point for generations to come. I'm sure that my nephews um, will be talking about this and telling stories about these uh, terrible uh, circumstances and, and, and conditions that we've all lived through and all experienced in different ways, but very much together. Um, they'll be talking about it to their grandkids, um, I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, what to talk about next? Well, um, uh, I suppose um, oh, you, you, you would have spotted the different titles popping up. I, I, I like to pick the videos the, you know, with, with, with generous um, 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 periods of, of, I don't want it to be too intrusive, but say in this video it's about an hour long so every 10 minutes you'll see uh, uh, title cards popping up so up until February I was putting in um, Harry Potter uh, and I was putting in uh, the Australian Open um, I've, I've um, now started putting in uh, uh, we just seem to have everything happen at once the footy started this week 
Last week was the uh, Melbourne International Comedy Festival, the Melbourne Fashion Festival, the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival, the world's longest lunch. I got there uh, at a just cherry, <laughs> cherry ripe time of the morning when I was setting it up. Um, uh, managed to get footage of all of that, so that's coming up. Um, I got down to the opening night gala of the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Um, that was the first time where somebody, um, an official, um, uh, one of the security guards pulled me up and said, what are you doing? Um, and uh, that was uh, all dealt with uh, quite, quite calmly and efficiently and professionally um, between the two of us, um, where he let me keep filming. Well, he couldn't stop me actually because uh, I had every right to be there, but uh, yeah, that, that was a bit um, of a new experience to be to be stopped and asked um, to explain myself, which was fine um, because I, I don't hide the fact that I'm filming. I don't I don't hide behind things. Uh, I'm going to comment on that busker uh, uh, when we get down to the uh, station entrance. Um, I walk around in a high vis vest. I um, I dress in a very smart, casual uh, business uh, sense. Um, that uh, the Melbourne, oh, the Melbourne Fashion Festival, of course. Now, um, just commenting on the Melbourne Fashion Festival, um, the often that was held in a virtual sense, but uh, they were able to hold a public event at the Meyer Emporium, and the Emporium is just a fancy word for shopping mall. Um, a redevelopment that finished um, a couple of years ago uh, that um, uh, I was able to get there. There was no runways because what they did was they streamed their runway events, which is incredibly clever. A bit unfortunate that you know you miss out on the excitement of being there. Um, I don't know much about the fashion, uh, the fashion industry. But um, I was able to get down there and film enough that I can, I'll definitely have enough to make at least a 10 minute video and, uh, and uh, managed to catch uh, the host of that particular event I went to, which was a drag queen. <laughs> oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. With the current media environment about equality for women and diversity and inclusiveness, and Melbourne Fashion Week, which is ostensibly all about women's fashion, and they've got a bloke in a dress and a very bad wig hosting the event. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say any more, and I'm going to stop right there. So um, we're walking down Brunton Avenue. We've got Yarra Park on our left, and the MCG is directly behind the camera. Uh, lots of smiling <laughs> footy fans. Um, just uh, Carlton fans hoping that their team will put on, on a decent display. They have not beat the Tigers in round one for the last eight years. That's how, that's how bad they're going. And on our right is uh, the Melbourne Public Transport Train Network. And uh, on the right, but behind my right shoulder, is uh, Rod Laver Arena. And the Australian Tennis Open, uh, uh, the National Tennis Centre, and all those, all those, the tennis precinct. So, um, uh, starting to see a few more people here, which uh, I was happy to see that because I, I wanted not not many of my videos. Uh, the majority of my videos don't have a great deal of people in them because, um, well, the bulk of my videos, uh, you know, I started in October 2020. Um, just coming out of a um, hundred days plus stage four lockdown. Uh, I don't like to film people as a rule. I don't go out of my way to film people. So um, this video is a bit of a groundbreaker for me that uh, it does have so many people. Now I wanted to uh, walk down Brunton Avenue because it's always closed uh, for the football, whether it's day or night. Um, it's kind of fun to walk down the middle of a busy road that normally has cars on it. I just wanted to get a sense of the greater perspective. Um, I thought there would be more crowds. Normally, you know, outside of COVID, um, this road would be full from left to right of screen with uh, people walking to the footy. The trains would be overflowing to the, to the brim uh, with footy fans coming from the eastern suburbs, coming from the Bayside suburbs, 
but not the case uh, t on, on, on this particular occasion. So it was, um, so it was a bit, a bit disappointing. But at the same time, well, one of the one of the things about these walking content videos is they are documenting a slice of life, aren't they? Like uh, the thing I like about these walking content videos is it's it's, it's people watching, isn't it? Um, that we're 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 seeing. We're seeing life unfold uh, before us, and uh, and this is just happens to be life at the moment. Um, Australia, and Melbourne is coming out of you know uh, the grip of the pandemic. Um, we we haven't beaten it. Um, we've, we've still got to deal with uh, people coming from from overseas. Um, our international student education sector has been devastated. Uh, almost destroyed. Uh, the same goes for tourism, of course. Um, so there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. But for the time being, it's just it's just so bloody nice for uh, for, for for you know the footy to be back and, uh, and a bit of um, normality about things. Now you'll see in the title that I, I have put up the score. Uh, Richmond did uh, did win. Uh, by all accounts, it was it was a pretty good game. That um, it was pretty level. Pegging uh, up until the middle of the last quarter, which for Carlton fans, they'll be thrilled with that. Um, so uh, hopefully their season will be uh, more wins than losses. So um, I I made a decision that I, I wanted to capture the crowd, but I didn't want to put myself amongst them, that I didn't want to, again, I wanted to be respectful of people's um, privacy. None of these people got up in the morning and said, right, I'm going to the footy and I want to be on YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to the footy and I want to be on YouTube. None of those people want to be on YouTube. They just want to go about their business. Um, they're probably you know, catching up with other people that they haven't seen for a very long time. And if they have seen them recently, they haven't been to the footy together for well over uh, 18 months. So I didn't want to intrude on that. I don't want to um, ambush people with the camera. I just want to capture life in Melbourne in the context of a walking video. Um, I'm quite entitled to do. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, um, you know, this, this just doesn't cut the mustard. I want to see people close up. I don't want the camera um, stopping for five minutes at a time. Well, well, that's fair enough, but um, I think, you know, what I'm trying to build into my content is that every so often I am going to stop and I am going to prop and I am going to just watch the camera over what's going on around the camera and I want to capture that because um, it is that kind of uh, stop and smell the roses moment that, you know, the camera doesn't always have to be moving, in my opinion. That, uh, now, here you go, um, <laughs> those girls, if you're impatient for a bit of movement in front of the camera, those, those girls have surreptitiously and uh, accidentally come to your rescue. But, um, no, look, um, I, think, uh, I think one of the advantages of, of being a content producer is it's a form of self-expression and, uh, you know, the, the, there's no hard and fast rules. Um, uh, sure, there's parameters, and, and look, I'm going to confess that I've done a lot of research about this uh, this particular niche, and uh, I've got a lot. I've got, you know, maybe, I, don't, I haven't even counted them up, so I, I wouldn't know how many. But it's definitely over 20 bookmarks of walking video content channels. But um, I'm, I'm going to, I have not looked at any of them, um, to be honest, because I, I don't want to copy and mimic other content producers. I definitely want to create my own style. I want to ease my way into it. I want to, I want to feel my way around. You know, what, what does it mean to be a content producer? Because look, to be honest, and I've, I've said this before in other commentaries, I don't want to, um, I don't want to be someone uh, that produces um, content uh, for YouTube. That was never my goal. Uh, I consider myself a, uh, a creative industries professional, so that means that I, I write scripts for uh, film and theatre. I've written um, short stories. I've been to Oxford and done a creative writing course. Uh, I, 20 years ago, I was obsessed with uh, 
with the guitar and, and singing uh, at open mic nights, uh, mostly covers, but I eventually got round to writing my own songs as we transitioned back to uh, uh, West Richmond Station. <laughs> Still on platform one. Um, the, but this is the, the, the odd bits, uh, the, the off cuts of the edits uh, we're getting into here, which, was what, which is why you'll see uh, the footage change um, and transition through the edit here a bit. Um, so, yeah, I, I just didn't... It's not my goal to be a YouTube producer, but um, the, it got to a stage last September after, as we were coming towards the end of our 100 day lockdown where, you know, I, I, was, I was sort of scratching around, um, you know, for something to you know, sink my teeth into and uh, it was that I accidentally did come across these walking video content channels and I, I realised that as a professional uh, who who has you know I've been to the American film market I've I've, I've um, had a great and uh, um, you know active interest in in the film industry the last uh, fifteen years but oh boy it's a real it's a real team game and uh, what I like about creating videos for this purpose is it's just me <laughs> it's just me. I don't. I don't have to. Um, I'm not. A, I'm not a technical person. I, I wouldn't call myself a, a professional with the camera, but I know. I know how to compose a frame. I know what I like to see. I know what I like to film, and I, I've taught myself over the last uh, ten years how to edit my own acting show reels. Um, so uh, I. I, uh, I know how to put content together. So I saw that it was um, an opportunity um, to keep myself occupied. And even put on the resume and 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 take on that entrepreneurial spirit of uh, you know creating something from nothing, uh, which is why I've stuck with it. And I wasn't too sure when I started out. I really wasn't too sure uh, that this would um, uh, be my thing or keep my interest or you know for 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 a grown man in his mid fifties to be walking around the streets of Melbourne with a camera. Um, and 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 just you know just filming nothing really like you know is that is that really something I want to um, invest my time in um, do I do I really believe in the whole you know uh, world of YouTube monetization well I still don't not yet um, but it has given me a chance to. Um, express my theories, um, evolve my theories about marketing strategies. Um, YouTube lends itself to a quick turnaround of content. YouTube lends itself to segmentation of um, markets and audiences. Um, so you'll see that I've created videos about the Australian Open, about international student education, um, about uh, different areas around Melbourne, um, different themes, different de destinations. So it hooked into tourism, and then it hooked into the whole. Well, now how does Melbourne, given that we've suffered so much with our international student education sector and our tourism sector, and our uh, elite level arts and events sectors, and <laughs> of course the conference uh, uh, sector as well? Well, how does Melbourne? as a brand, uh, keep that awareness going? How does it generate interest to people overseas when they can't travel to get here? So it's given me a chance to um, put into practice um, a lot of ideas and strategies and, and, and theories that I've long held but never really been successful at um, expressing in a commercial uh, manner. Um, so I'm enjoying that aspect of it, that, 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 that I think there's I think there's a commercial um, aspect to creating this content that I'm, I'm about to explore placing this content um, uh, into commercial areas of what they call uh, OTT platforms. Um, so I'm going to uh, set up a, um, um, a register for one of those platforms in the next couple of days that I've established that yes, they do accept on uh, content such as this. Where uh, this particular platform, I'm not gonna name it because it's simply because I can't pronounce the name of it. But they have, uh, I've been aware of them since 2017. They, they were at the American film market the year I was there. 
Uh, last year I, I enrolled, I attended the, uh, the, 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 the Cannes Film Festival through their virtual uh, platform for March to Cannes. Uh, they were presenting there. Um, and uh, they are a very seemingly successful online content marketplace where they have uh, 4,000 buyers uh, for online content registered. So I'm going to test that out. That uh, I I can see I can see an opportunity to create content for uh, buyers who want content for uh, their mobile mobile device platforms. Now this was a complete accident that I left it in. Normally when I, I stop filming, um, I, uh, I, I switch off the camera, but what I've, what I've found is really helpful in the editing process is to leave the camera running and recording. And this particular occasion, I just, I just deliberately put the camera with the lens facing up to the sky um, to protect <laughs> the lens, obviously. But uh, when I got to editing, I saw it, it just came out so accidentally perfectly that I decided to leave it in. So um, that's, that's the beauty of this process is sometimes accidents happen um, that uh, work out well uh, that you uh, keep it. So this was actually exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be walking against the flow of people. I wanted to be surrounded by people. I wanted to be surrounded by happy, happy, supporters of both sides going to the footy uh, I timed my run perfectly and perfectly accidentally and then the sun came out and uh, and, and you can see it for yourself now um, just because I filmed it with the Olympus um, doesn't mean that I can't come back another time and, and capture this light um, uh, another great day to come back and be at the end of the season on grand final day um, I think I'll come back with uh, the Sony and um, I'll have a better camera better audio and um, better footage but um, I was really super happy with this um, I had the high vis vest on as you saw um, this is probably uh, with about 15 to 10 minutes to go before the game people are still arriving it's not unusual for people to, uh, for whatever reason, they might not get there uh, until 20 minutes into the game. But so long as people get there, they're happy. And I, I just, um, I just wanted to take my time um, filming the same east to west direction as the sem as the sun was setting. I just wanted to capture people walking to the game. Um, now the two directions they're coming from. Uh, to the right immediately is, and you'll see them um, as we get closer, those uh, exit gates. But you can also exit the eastern end of Richmond train station and then just uh, walk in a westward fashion back over Punt Road in front of us, which is one of Melbourne's... Uh, there he is, the bloke in the white T-shirt, who provided me with a great thumbnail um, because of uh, what he did with his uh, chatting to his mates there. But... Um, just to capture that um, that anticipation before the game, the excitement before the game, I felt that the crowd was a little bit subdued. Um, and another thing I'm just going to briefly comment on is the buskers. Buskers, uh, I don't I don't have anything positive to say. Look, I, I think part of the fun of the game, you know, there's a community aspect. Yes, this is a high level elite event in uh, our sporting culture but you know can we just keep the buskers keep the corporate side of out of people people don't need to be entertained with covers of Michael Jackson's Billie Jean uh, earlier on uh, as I got onto Brunton Avenue the busker was playing um, another brick in the wall by Pink Floyd do we really want to hear Pink Floyd played by a busker going to the footy. I'm going to say I don't. I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't, I don't see that that is, 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 is adding to the fan experience. I really don't. But <laughs> I'm not in charge. <laughs> I'm not in charge of keeping the fans happy on their way to the footy. Now, to be honest, you can see they're all talking to each other. They're all looking at their phones. <laughs> Luckily, none of them are really looking at me. 
<laughs> and so um, I'm going to finish up there uh, because uh, we're into the last uh, couple of minutes. Uh, the footage is going to finish up here. I came up with this idea of having um, black screen for a change uh, at the end of the footage. Uh, it might flip to... Oh, no, there's going to be me. Um, I decided to do a couple of things differently um, as the cyclist veers off because he clearly he clearly didn't want to be on YouTube. But I decided to finish off with the same intro, but uh, the longer version, um, uh, just uh, for something different. Um, I did two intros, so this is the second intro. And I just decided to do something completely different to have black screen and uh, the, uh, the titles here. So, um, and, and the crowd noise underneath. Uh, so I want to I wanna say thanks, and especially to the couple of people who really watched uh, almost two to three hours of uh, commentary footage over the last couple of weeks. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means so much that it's, uh, people are finding this interesting to listen to. Um, I'm the bloke who walked. You've been watching This Walking Life, which is video content coming uh, from uh, the city of Melbourne in Australia. Stay safe, stay well, and thanks for watching. And uh, we'll chat to you in the next video commentary, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.